Well, what in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Well, sadly, the old output transformer has got some serious issues, and uh, it exhibited itself in overall low volume and a real particular grainy sound as if notes were cutting off that I associate with the sound of one output tube not operating fully. And upon investigation, it was this socket here that was not operating fine. This one was fine. This one was not uh, drawing much current at all. And I swapped the output tubes around and it stayed with the socket. So upon investigation, I'm skipping ahead a bit to save you guys some time that I spent in the diagnostics, but I'm showing you the key finding. If I measure from the center tap of this old output transformer to one of the primaries, 24.24K. You should never read something like 24K on the primary. The other primary is 148.9.8, rather, ohms. So 149 ohms versus 24K. 149 ohms is correct, 24K is not. And some quick math I did. The tube which was operating was, uh, was drawing 148%, uh, was idling at 148% uh, plate dissipation. The one which was not operating was idling at 4.8%. So that would be the sound we heard where technically this tube was operating, but at 4%, and this one was doing all the heavy lifting almost at 200% of what it should be doing. And I don't think those output tubes have enjoyed that life. Uh, we've got all new tubes for this amp on order as well. All new old stock tubes because they're, these are not current production tubes. So anyway, as you can see here, I have temped in the output transformer for a deluxe reverb because the primary that two 6Vs, no, sorry, 6N6s expect to see the primary impedance the load is not that different from what two 6V6s expect to see, and it's an 8-ohm speaker. So this Deluxe Reverb Transformer was a, was a fine test choice, but as you can see, it is physically quite larger than the old one. Mercury has a one-to-one -one replacement reproduction of this old one. We're going to order one of those. It may be a little bit. I don't think it's something that they stock, but they make. So I'll, I will find out soon the turnaround time on that. And um, I'm not entirely sure the interstage transformer that takes the place of the phase inverter, I'm not entirely sure that that thing is going to make the cut. It is not original to the amp. I can tell by all the spliced wires that someone changed that out at some point. And you can also see this yellow cap added. This is a 1 nanofarad 630 volt cap across the grids of the two output tubes. Without that cap, the amp oscillates and squeals. With that cap, uh, the oscillation is gone. These amps historically did not have that capacitor. And uh, it's possible that there's a fault in the interstage transformer, the driver transformer, the splitter transformer, uh, which is uh, causing that instability. It could be all, also just be a lead dress of other things in the amp, but I'm kicking that can down the road a little bit. I want to wait till we have all good tubes, just in case it's an issue with the uh, the 6C5, uh, which drives this transformer, or an issue with either or both of these old 6N6 output tubes. Anyway, let's power it on and let you hear what it's sounding like now that the output transformer is working and the power tubes are working. And according to my calculations, they are now 106% and 96%. Uh, there are cathode biased tubes, so that, so that is a, a normal idle situation. Let's power it on, and I'm going to grab the 335 because its neck pickup is going to be the closest thing I have in output to a Charlie Christian pickup. And when this app is done, Joe Restivo is going to come over and he's going to play an old ES-150 and an old ES-250 through this app for us, and he can play the Charlie Christian stuff using the actual guitars that Charlie Christian would have used. So that'll be a fun treat. In the meantime, neck pickup on a 335. I'll roll the tone back to about 05, uh, which should be kind of in the ballpark. And here is the instrument channel. And 
and there's a little bit of an ugliness there that may be, like I said, these old tubes. I'm a little concerned about this speaker. It has been reconed, but that does not mean that it's 100% healthy. But again, it could just be things vibrating in the cabinet since it's not all locked together. The uh, instrument channel is kind of interesting in, in these old amps. The uh, guitar signal comes in and goes to this volume pot and then goes to this tube. And then the output of that tube goes uh, is mixed with the output of the uh, microphone channel and then goes to this tube, which drives the splitter transformer, which goes to the two output tubes. And the two output tubes in these amps are two uh, triodes. One is a low gain triode, which uh, feeds this output to the higher gain triode and the uh, higher gain triode. Uh, both triodes are cathode biased internally. There's a resistor physically in the tube. And that could be also something which could be a little bit squirrely in those old tubes after this long. But anyway, you don't have any additional gain on the instrument level. Just take this volume pot right here is just taking the place of the volume pot on the guitar. I can turn it down from the guitar and get the same result as if turning it down here. Though the uh, position, o'clock position differs. Contrast that with the quote microphone channel, which has the same input impedance as the instrument input. But in this situation, the, the guitar signal goes straight to a pentode tube, and the output of that pentode tube feeds one of the triodes here, and then is mixed with the uh, instrument channel triode, and then goes to the rest of the circuit. So we've got uh, not only one additional gain stage, but quite a bit more gain from that pentode. So with this thing just below halfway, it's pretty much at the max on the instrument. Then you turn it up beyond that. Now there was like a tearing paper sound as well as various buzzes. So I have to wait until I know the amp is healthy with the new tubes and all that stuff. But I'm a little bit concerned about this speaker. It was reconed at some point. I don't know how, how long ago. I don't know how well. So normally I would play another amp through this speaker just to test the speaker in isolation from everything else. Given the way this thing is constructed and that it has a field coil, that's not really an option without just spending a ton of money. I know that once everything in the amp has been addressed, if we still have those issues with the speaker, I can take this speaker to my buddy Dave Halford, who does a truly world-class job of reconing these things, including field coils. So if we need to address the speaker down the road, we will, but that is down the road. First, I've got to get a new transformer, output transformer, get those new, new old stock tubes in place, make sure that everything in the amp is copacetic, I want to track down that oscillation because that cap should not be necessary. Test the splitter transformer. And if necessary, then we'll look at the speaker. There are just so many little pieces to this puzzle. And in an app this old and this intrinsically rare, we have to get each piece just right. So I know this looks kind of sloppy and mad dash and casual with all these wires everywhere. This is actually very methodical testing and planning. It just looks very mad scientist uh, at this stage in the process. It'll all be beautiful again soon. How soon, I cannot say due to factors beyond my control, such as how long it takes to get the new transformer, uh, whether the new new old stock tubes are great. It's always a, a question with those, even from a good vendor. Sometimes you have to get two or three of the same thing before you find the one which really does the trick. But that is all down the road.